welcome to the next lecture in electric circuit analysis in this lecture we are going to focus our discussion on two port networks let us start with the introduction first so what is a port that we need to know a port is basically a pair of terminals through which a current may enter or leave a network so the current may enter or it may leave a network and it is a pair of terminals so the port is defined as a pair of terminals through which the current may enter or leave the network when we talk about the resistance inductance and capacitance they are basically the two terminal devices or the elements so the terminals are counted to be two and hence it is known as one port network so whenever terminals are there then it is a port and when two terminals are there then it is a one port network whereas when we have a four terminal then we can have a two port circuit for example op amps transistors or transformers so they will have four terminal and they are basically the two port network or the circuit so our focus of discussion will be two port circuits in this particular lecture however in general a network can have n number of ports it can be more than two also it can have 3 4 or n number of ports the definition for a two port network is the electrical network with two separate ports at the input and the output so the input and output are having the separate entry for the current and leaving the current at the output terminal so it is defined as two port network let us see the one port network and two port network visualize with a figure so if you have a linear network with only one port means a pair of terminals then when we apply a voltage the current will leave or enter the network in that port only whereas if you have a two port network we will have two separate currents which are entering or leaving the network and in total we will be having the four terminals so two port network will have four terminals whereas one port network will have two terminals these networks are commonly used in communications control systems power systems and electronics network so two port networks are quite useful in such type of applications generally a two port network is characterized by the terminal quantities so we have seen in the previous diagram that the terminal quantities are basically the voltages and current and these are at the input side and as well as the output side out of which two are independent it means that two quantities will be independent and another two quantities will be dependent so the characterization will be in terms of the terminal quantities for the two port network so the various terms that relate this voltage and current are called parameters so the relationship between the voltage and current two at a time is known as the parameters and these parameters we are going to discuss in detail if we know the parameters of a two port network that will enable us to treat as a black box when embedded within a large network so when we use these parameters then it is generally used to model the black box system knowing the parameters that is the relationship between the terminal quantities so in general there will be six set of parameters that we are going to study in the two port network we have the impedance network which are also defined as the z parameters admittance network which are known as y parameters hybrid parameters are the h parameters inverse parameter or the g parameters transmission line parameters or the abcd parameters inverse transmission or the t parameters so in general six set of parameters will define the two port network and these six parameters we are going to study in the chapter two port networks in this particular lecture we are going to focus on the first set of parameters that are the impedance parameters or the z parameters 
So Z parameters or the impedance parameters are very useful in the design and analysis of impedance matching networks and power distribution networks. So whenever we need to design any network or when we need to do some analysis for the impedance matching or the power distribution, we will prefer the Z parameters. Generally, a two-port network may be voltage driven or current driven. It means that the input side or the output side a voltage source may be connected or on the input side and the output side a current may be connected. So these are voltage driven or current driven and the relationship between these terminal quantities will give us the parameters and the topic that we are going to discuss is only the Z parameter in this lecture video. The terminal voltages can be related to the terminal current as when the two out of four variables are independent means two variables are independent another two variables are dependent depending upon the four quantities that is v1 v2 i1 i2 these are the terminal quantities so these quantities may be mathematically written in the form of the equations of the input side relating with the other terminal quantities and the output side related with the other quantities where the Z11, Z12, Z21 and Z22 are basically the parameters which govern the relationship between the terminal quantities. If we put this in the matrix form then the terminal voltages and the terminal currents are related with this Z matrix with each individual elements represented by Z11, Z12, Z21 and Z22 this is told to be the Z matrix. The terms in the Z matrix are the impedance parameters or simply known as Z parameters and they have the unit of ohms. So they are basically the impedance having the unit of ohms. These values of the Z parameters are evaluated keeping the current to be zero either on the input side or on the output side. So input port may be open circuited or output port may be open circuited to determine the Z parameters. So if we calculate the Z parameters one by one, so the Z11 can be obtained from the equation V1 by I1 setting I2 to be zero. Similarly, Z21 can be obtained as V2 by I1 setting I2 to be zero. Z12 and Z22 can be obtained by the relationship of the voltages and current keeping I1 zero. So we are getting this from this matrix form to calculate the Z parameters with the open circuit of the currents either on the input side or on the output side. So when I2 is zero on the output side we will get the parameter Z11 and Z21 with this relationship whereas when the current I1 is kept zero no current is flowing on the input side then we will be getting the parameters Z12 and Z22 as the Z parameters. So the parameters defining the Z parameters are obtained by open circuiting the input and the output port hence these terms are referred to as open circuit input impedance for Z11, open circuit transfer impedance from port 1 to port 2 Z12, transfer impedance from port 2 to port 1 Z21 and the output impedance for Z22. So the quantities are basically all are open circuit quantities and these quantities can be told in a group format as Z11 and Z22 are the driving point impedances and Z12 and Z21 are the transfer impedances which are relating the port 1 and port 2. The driving point impedances are at the particular port either on the input side or on the output side. Now let us see what is a symmetrical network. Symmetrical network is a network where the driving point impedance Z11 is equal to Z22. In such case, those networks are known as symmetrical networks. Why symmetrical? Because it implies that the network has a mirror-like symmetry about some center line 
that is a line can be found that divides the network into two similar halves. So two similar halves you will be getting when the symmetrical networks are there where the driving point impedance Z11 and Z22 are equal. On the other hand, if we talk about the reciprocal network, when the network is linear and has no dependent source, it should not have any dependent source, only independent sources should be there. The transfer impedances are equal, Z12 and Z21 are equal, which is known as the reciprocal network. The meaning is, if we change the point of excitation and response, excitation means the input, response means the output. If we change the points or interchange, the transfer impedance remains the same. Z12 is equal to Z21, transfer impedance remains the same if we change the input or the output. Like for an example here, if on the input side we are giving the voltage and on the output side we are measuring the current, then the voltage and the current are related with each other for a two-core network if it is a reciprocal as Z12 into current. On the other hand, if we apply the voltage on the output side and measure the current on the input side, then it is given by V equal to Z12I. These two will be equal under the condition that Z12 is equal to Z21, which is a reciprocal network. Any two port network that is made up of entirely of RLC element, resistance, inductance and capacitance must be reciprocal. And when the network is a reciprocal case, then we can represent such type of network using T equivalent circuit, where the impedances at the input side is Z11 minus Z12, and the output impedance is Z22 minus Z12 and the transfer impedance between the 1 and 2 is Z12 and the terminal characteristic are related with V1 I1 and V2 I2. So this is the port 1 and this is the port 2 which are related with T equivalent circuit. In general, the equivalent circuit, if the circuit is reciprocal or not, we can have the input side related with the equations of the mesh where V1 is equal to I1 into Z11 plus ZI2 I2. On the output side, we have V2 is equal to I2 into Z22 plus Z21 I1. So this is the general equivalent circuit of a two-port network if it is not reciprocal. It is to be noted that the ideal transformer has no Z parameter as the voltages cannot be expressed in terms of the current and vice versa. Like if you have this idle transformer, this is V1 I1, the input side and V2 I2 on the output side, that is primary and the secondary and the transformation ratio is eta, then V1 is related with V2 in terms of 1 by eta V2, whereas I1 is related with minus eta I2. We can see that both side we have the voltage equation, V1 is related with V2 in terms of V1 I2. So voltages do not depend upon the current and current do not depend upon voltage. So we will be not having any Z parameters. So no Z parameters will be there. Let us solve few problems on Z parameters. Problem number one, if you have a network, you have to determine the Z parameters where the resistances are given for the network. Let us see how to solve it. First, we want to find the parameters Z11 and Z21. We have set known that the secondary current I2 will be zero in this case and only the primary current will be flowing for a source voltage. So we need to find V1 by I1 for Z11 and V2 by I1 for Z21 when the current I2 is zero. We can apply any theorem which we have studied earlier in electric circuit. Here we can have only one mass problem. So we will get 60 ohms and 40 ohms as Z11 and Z21 value. We have enough discussed these all problems in the circuit theorems. On the other hand, if we talk about the values of Z12 and Z22, we have to keep the current I1 to be zero. In this case, the relationship between the V1 and I2 will give the Z12 and the relationship between V2 by I2 will give Z22 which comes to be 40 ohms and 70 ohms. So once we have obtained all the parameters, we can form the Z matrix which are the Z parameters. This is Z11, this is Z12, this is Z21 and this is Z22. 
we can see that Z12 is equal to Z21. So the network is reciprocal. Problem number two, we have to determine the current I1 and I2 in the network whose Z parameters is already given to us. Now in the previous problem, we need to find the Z parameter. Here the Z parameter values are given to us. We need to find what is the current I1 and I2 in the network for the source voltage of 100 angle zero. Please note that the reciprocal network is not in this particular case because the value of Z11 and Z21 are not equal. So it is not a reciprocal network. So the relationship between the quantities V1, V2 with respect to I1, I2 can be formed as with respect to the Z parameters as V equal to Z parameters multiplied with the current. The Z parameters are already given in the question. We are also given that the voltage is V1 and V2 because V1 is 100 angle 0 and V2 is nothing but the potential drop across the 10 ohm register which is equal to minus 10 of I2. The negative sign is coming because the current is going out of the terminal. So this is in accordance with passive sign convention. Now we can put the values of V1 and V2 and form the relationship where we need to find the values of I1 and I2. If we do the solution with the steps followed, we'll get the values of I1 as 2 angle 0 and I2 is equal to 1 angle minus 90 degree. So we have determined the current for a not a reciprocal network. So this complete the video lecture on Z parameters. In the coming lecture, we are going to see the admittance parameters and then the other set of parameters. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.